Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Biscayne National Park. That's right, I am in a national park right now. Biscayne is 95% underwater and it protects the third largest coral reef in the entire world. This reef thrives in the warm ocean currents off the coast of Florida. But why is this water so warm? And why is there a current here anyways? And how does the ocean move water and heat around the planet? Let's find out today on Outsider Classroom. This reef is one of over 4,000 found in Biscayne National Park. Coral reefs are among the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet, rivaling even tropical rainforests. 25% of all ocean species spend some part of their lives in a coral reef, which needs warm, clear waters to thrive. In Biscayne, the ocean temperatures are a balmy 80 degrees. But why are these waters so warm? Let's start with their usual suspect, the sun. The Earth's surface is continuously bombarded with 173,000 terawatts of solar energy. That's 10,000 times the entire electrical output of the planet every second of every day. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of energy. Man, so much really learned to capture all that. But ocean water just doesn't sit still currents carry water and heat all around the planet. Actually, right now we're in a current. This is the Gulf Stream, which originates in the warm tropical waters of the Caribbean and travels around the Southeast United States all the way up to Europe. So what drives that motion? Now, I'm about to blow your mind. Heat doesn't rise. Heat is energy. That would be like saying light rises or electricity rises. That wouldn't make any sense. But warm things are generally less dense than cooler things, which in a fluid system like our atmosphere means that warm air masses will rise relative to cooler ones. Right now we're about 25 degrees north latitude, so we're pretty close to the equator, which means Biscayne gets a lot of direct sunlight. Air at the surface near the equator gets heated, expands, and is forced into the upper atmosphere. There, it cools, becomes more dense, and sinks back down to the surface where it's heated once again. When a fluid like air is circulating due to temperature and density differences, we call that a convection current. Convection currents can be found throughout the Earth. They're in our atmosphere, in our oceans, even inside the Earth in the mantle. Understanding convection currents is really essential to understanding a lot of systems on our planet. Which is why it's so important you stay up on current events. The convection currents in our atmosphere make for prevailing surface winds that push water around our oceans. It's this cycle of air being heated by the sun, moving into the upper atmosphere, then sinking as it cools that drives ocean currents. But heat isn't the only factor at play here. To help us understand what else influence ocean currents is my friend and marine scientist, Angelique Rosa Marine. Our planet moves, um, it rotates in its own axis, and basically how ocean currents are affected by this uh, rotation, it's because this effect calls the Coriolis effect. So the Coriolis effect, it's a, it's a force that is caused because the rotation of our planet that creates that our currents and also the winds goes to a, a specific like direction in the north part of our planet and in the south part. Specifically that driving force in the north part, it's gonna influence on the winds and they're gonna move to the right side clockwise. And in the southern part are gonna move to the contrary part. And how this affect the ocean current? So as I was saying, it affects the direction of the winds and the winds plays an important and crucial role 
in the creation and also the development of the ocean currents around our planet. Specifically here, we are in Florida. We are in the Biscayne Park. So we are in the northern part um, of our globe. So in this case here, basically the currents, and as we are seeing here in the park, are gonna move to the right. Ocean currents don't just move water around the planet, they're also a huge factor in local climates. Here's a good example. Most of continental Europe is north of the United States. Based on latitude alone, you'd expect Spain to have roughly the same climate as Ohio, but that's not the case at all. I should know, I live in Ohio. It gets pretty cold there in the winters where Spain's a lot more temperate. So what gives? The Gulf Stream, the current that runs around Florida and through Biscayne National Park, brings warm water from the Caribbean north all the way to Europe. Without the Gulf Stream, Europe would experience much cooler temperatures than they do today. Ocean currents are one of the most important ways heat moves around the planet. Here's another way oceans impact climate. Water has what's called a high specific heat, meaning it takes a lot of energy to change its temperature. If you live by the ocean or a lake, or even if you have a pool in your backyard, you know that while air temperatures can be pretty hot in June, the water can still be too cold to go swimming. And the opposite holds true. Sometimes the water is nice enough to go for a dip well into fall. So how does that impact climate? Areas near the ocean tend to experience less extreme temperatures because the water stabilizes the climate. It takes a lot of energy to change its temperature. But if you're in the middle of the continent, you don't have that stabilizing force on your climate and temperatures can be a lot more swinging. Biscayne is a super fun park to visit. You can paddle through mangroves or go scuba diving or snorkeling on the coral reefs. Check out the Biscayne National Park Institute. They've got a bunch of awesome tours and super knowledgeable guides. Just remember, the ocean can be a dangerous place. Being an experienced swimmer in this park is a must. So if you're not comfortable swimming, being out in the open ocean might not be for you. And if you're ever out in a boat, make sure you know where the fire extinguishers and life jackets are before you set sail. Hey, even pirates put safety first. Actually, they probably didn't put safety first, but you should. Happy exploring. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.